Hi everybody, I'm Emily Anderson and I'm happy to welcome you to Powerhouse Science Storytime. The book I'm going to share with you this time is Rosie Revere Engineer by Andrea Beatty and illustrated by David Roberts. This is the story of Rosie Revere who dreamed of becoming a great engineer. In Lila Greer's classroom at Blue River Creek, young Rosary sat shyly, daring not to speak. But when no one saw her, she peeked through the trash for treasures to add to her engineer stash. And late, late at night, Rosie rolled up her sleeves and built in her hideaway under the eaves. Alone in her attic, the moon high above, dear Rosie made gadgets and gizmos she loved. And when she grew sleepy, she hid her machines far under the bed where they'd never be seen. When Rosie was young, she had not been so shy. She worked with her hair swooping over one eye and made fine inventions for uncles and aunts, a hot dog dispenser and helium pants. The uncle she loved most was zookeeper Fred. She made him a hat to keep snakes off his head. From parts of a fan and some cheddar cheese spray, which everyone knows keeps the pythons away. And when it was finished, young Rosie was proud, but Fred slapped his knee and chuckled aloud. He laughed till he wheezed and his eyes filled with tears to all the horror of Rosie Revere who stood there embarrassed, perplexed, and dismayed. She looked at the cheese hat and then looked away. I love it, Fred hooted. Oh, truly I do. But Rosie Revere knew that that could not be true. She stuck the cheese hat on the back of her shelf and after that day kept dreams to herself. And that's how it went until one autumn day her oldest relation showed up for a stay. Her great-great aunt Rose, a true dynamo who worked building airplanes a long time ago. She told Rosie tales of the things she had done and goals she had checked off her list one by one. She gave a sad smile as she looked to the sky. The only thrill left on my list is to fly. But time never lingers as long as it seems, I'll chalk that one up to an old lady's dreams. That night as Rosie lay wide awake in bed, a daring idea crept into her head. Could she build a gizmo to help her aunt fly? She looked at the cheese head and said, no, not I. But questions are tricky and some hold on tight and this one kept Rosie awake through the night. So when dawn approached, the red streaks lit the sky, young Rosie knew just how to make her aunt fly. She worked and she worked till the day was half gone, then hauled her cheese copter out onto the lawn to give her invention a test just to see the ridiculous flop it might turn out to be. Strapped into the cockpit, she flipped on the switch. The Helio cheese copter sputtered and twitched. It floated a moment and whirled round and round, then froze for a heartbeat and crashed to the ground. Then Rosie heard laughter and turned round to see the old woman laughing and slapping her knee. She laughed till she wheezed and her eyes filled with tears all to the horror of Rosie Revere, who thought, oh no, never, not ever again, will I try to build something to sputter or spin or build with a lever, a switch or a gear and never will I be a great engineer. She turned round to leave but then great, great aunt Rose grabbed hold of young Rosie and pulled her in close and hugged her and kissed her and started to cry. You did it, hooray, it's the perfect first try. 
This great flop is over. It's time for the next. Young Rosie was baffled, embarrassed, perplexed. I failed, said dear Rosie. It just made of trash. Didn't you see it? The cheese copter crashed. Yes, said her great aunt. It crashed. That is true. But first it did just what it needed to do. Before it crashed, Rosie, before that it flew. Your brilliant first flop was a raging success. Come on, let's get busy and on to the next. She handed a notebook to Rosie Revere, who smiled at her aunt as it all became clear. Life might have its failures, but this was not it. The only true failure can come if you quit. They worked till the sun sneaked away to its bed. Aunt Rosie tied the headscarf around Rosie's head and sent her to sleep with a smile ear to ear to dream the bold dreams of a great engineer. At Blue Creek, all the kids in grade two build gizmos and gadgets and dickery do's too. With each perfect failure, they all stand and cheer, but none quite as proudly as Rosie Revere. I hope you enjoyed the story of Rosie Revere Engineer as much as I did. And now I want to invite you to try a science activity with me. I want to challenge you to become an engineer and build a flying machine. No, not a Helio cheese copter, but something that might look a little bit more familiar to you. And we need to make this flying machine overcome a kind of tug of war of forces. All right, engineers. Now you're gonna design a flying machine like Rosie did. Remember, you're gonna to try to build a paper airplane. You're gonna figure out what the best model is and the best design according to your different trials. But remember, whenever you're making a flying machine, there's that tug of war of forces I talked about. Lift and thrust are always fighting drag and gravity. Planes push a lot of air. They have a lot of drag or resistance. An easy way to think about that is moving your hand through the air. When your hand is up on the side, it has more drag or resistance than if you put it palm down. It's pushing less air this way. It has less drag. Planes work the same way. The second force at work is gravity. Gravity is that force that's constantly pulling things down. One way to overcome the force of gravity is to limit the weight of your plane. Now, thrust and lift are the other forces that help your plane fly. Thrust is the forward movement of your plane. The thrust for our paper airplane comes from your muscles when you throw it. Lift comes from the air below the airplane's wing, pushing up harder than the air on top of the airplane wing. The difference of the pressure enables the plane to fly. When these four balances are closely in balance, that usually means that you have a long flight. But you can play with this tug of war to achieve different kinds of flight. If you want a flyer built for, say, a slow, gentle flight, then you want to have a lot of lift and less thrust. If you are designing a plane for a shorter, more rapid flight, you might really design it to have a lot of thrust and not worry so much about the weight. Those are all different variables you can try out when you're building your flying machine. Remember, all engineers rely on good failures to learn from their mistakes and never give up. Good luck designing your paper airplane.